11 years and 4 months. Do you know what that number is? That is the amount of time an average human being spends on his screens throughout his lifetime. Just take a moment to grasp or imagine that. It is even more than the time, than the summation of time we spend on activities like eating, holiday, exercise and romance throughout our lifetime. Just take a moment to grasp that. Today, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how spending insanely high amounts of time on screens or technology is affecting the quality of each and every one of our lives present here. But before I go into that, I want to state one fact. Technology is neither good nor bad. It's given meaning by how we use it. Let me give you an analogy to explain that. So uh, let's, take a, let's take an empty glass. It doesn't mean anything to anyone. But if you pour water in it and have it, then that's good use of it. On the other hand, if you pour rat poison in it and have it, then that's completely bad use of it. So this is how it works with technology as well. If you use technology to enhance your life, then that's good use of it. But on the other hand, if you use technology to deteriorate your life, then that's bad use of it. So today, I'm here or to give you a solution or to guide you towards a solution that will help you have a more meaningful and more intentional relationship with your technology. So I want to talk about three major problems first. Number one, given the statistics and scientific research, majority of us are connected to technology 24-7. Majority of us use it throughout our days. That is from our alarm clocks to our in-person conversations to having lunch, to get, getting up in the middle of, middle of the night to check our phones, to even in some cases while getting intimate. It's how bad it has become. It's everywhere. So this is what I see in office nowadays. I go to, people go to the toilet to urinate, and while urinating, they have a phone in one of their hands. I just want to ask you one question. It takes 21 seconds to urinate. What could you possibly achieve from your phone in those 21 seconds? Even if this doesn't surprise you, let me give you one more alarming statistic. One in 10 people have admitted to checking their phones while getting intimate. It's how bad it has become. We can't even control the urge to check our phones even during one of the biggest pleasures of our life. This is how bad it has become. Number two, excessive use of technology is affecting our physical and mental health. It's not just those excessive use of 11 years and four months we're losing out on, but what about the effect it has on the rest of the 60, 70 odd years it has? The effect is on our relationships with ourselves. We don't feel good about ourselves. We have lower levels of self-esteem, and we feel bad about ourselves. The effect is on our relationships with other relationships we have. We're, we're angry at them, and we're not there in the moment because we're busy staring at our screens while talking to them. This is how bad it has become. Number three, looking at people around me, looking at the trends in increase of screen usage in the past so many years, and the fact that majority of us can't even live without our phones nowadays, I strongly believe that its future looks bleak until and unless we start doing something about it right now. We have Paris Climate Accord targets for each one. I, I strongly believe that it's not getting the global attention as something as compared to climate change. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that it's a big issue like climate change, but if we don't start doing something about it right now, it might become the biggest issue our generation faces in the coming future. We have Paris Climate Accord targets for each one of our countries. Similarly, it's time we have technology de-addiction targets for each one of our uh, countries. This is how the revolution and this is how the change will start. An average human being spends around 6 hours and 42 minutes online. And more than 50% of this time is spent on areas like pornography, social media, and Netflix. And most of us use it excessively and unnecessarily. Thus, there's a huge scope to reduce a few hours in these areas, and that's what we need to look at, what each and every one of us needs to look at. Let me give you three powerful facts. Number one, if you reduce your technology time by two hours every day, you save 7.30 hours in a year. 
730 hours. Just take a moment to grasp that, 730 hours. And these are the hours that are quantifiable. If you adopt some good habits in these hours, then it will have ripple effect in other areas of your life. Number two, 730 hours is equivalent to a month in a year. One more month in a year. What all could you do in this time? Do you still want to complain that you don't have enough time in your life? Number three, an average human being lives around 79 years. So if we reduce our technology usage by two hours throughout our lifetime, then we save six and a half years. Six and a half more years in a lifetime. What all could you do in this time? Your unfulfilled passion, your unfulfilled hobbies, spending good quality time and energy with your relationships, sleeping, since all of us are sleep deprived, right? So go grab this opportunity. This is where your transformation starts. If these stats don't internally motivate you to moderate your screen usage, let me give you three more powerful facts. Number one, you can learn any skill in the first 20 hours. So if you reduce your technology usage by two hours every day and invest it here, you can learn any skill in 10, uh, in 10 days or 20 hours. All of us want to learn some skills, right? Dance, craft, etc., technology. This is the time to start working on it. Number two, it takes 21 days to build a habit. Just 21 days. So if you use that two hours of your time and invest it in the habits that you want, then you can build a habit in 21 days. All of us want to go to the gym, right? This is the time to start working on it. This is the time to start your transformation. Number three, if we can become an expert in 14 years of time, I know this is long term, we can become an expert in 14 years of our time if we invest that two hours of our technology time in the area of expertise we want. All of us want to become experts, right? Like technology, data science, etc. So this is the time to start working on it. This is the time to start your personal transformation. Remember two more things. Number one, time is the biggest resource each and every one of us has. And number two, the biggest investment you will ever make is on yourself. Thus, we need to know, take control of our times, our investments, and our lives. Now, I want to talk about a powerful technique which I've adopted, which has helped me moderate my screen usage. So I unplug or do a digital detox for 12 hours a day. 10, 12 hours a day. You must be thinking that I'm insane, and how is that even possible? But let me kind of break it down to show you how practical and how transformative it is. So uh, I generally unplug from all technologies two hours before I sleep. I keep my screens or my technology in the other room so that I create an environment which is suitable for me. So what I do in these two hours is I spend good quality time and energy with my relationships. I read books. I write gratitude. So when I actually go to sleep, I'm really feeling very fresh, very intentional, and very relaxed about life. And I generally sleep instantly within five to 10 minutes because uh, I'm, I'm not being exposed to that blue screen just before I sleep. So that is how powerful this technique is. This is the first two hours of my detox. Next, so I, when I go to sleep, I sleep for around eight hours. I actually sleep with an old traditional alarm clock. It's a really powerful technique because when you go to sleep, when you don't get up in the middle of the night to check your smartphones, or you don't get up in the morning to check your smartphones, you're just seeing an alarm clock. So you have a very good quality sleep because of this. This constitutes around 10 hours. So uh, coming to my morning time, I also continue my digital detox in the morning. I do it for around two hours. So what I do is I go for a exercise in the walk. I go for a walk in the nature. I write gratitude. I do meditation and I read about it. This is what constitutes for my first two hours of the morning. So I, I this has and this sets the tone for my whole day, and I strongly believe that I. Uh, that this 10 to 12 hours is, is like a holiday for me. I feel like I'm on a 10 to 12 hour holiday every day and away from all the anxieties and all the stress that I have in life. Now you must be thinking that I might miss out on work, I might, might miss out on school, I might miss out on something. But given my experience, I can tell you that you don't miss out on anything. You actually experience joy of missing out or JOMO. So starting today, I want you to start small by just keeping your phone in the other room or just keeping your phone in airplane mode and sleeping without your phone and then build up on this habit. 
and the best part about this is that you don't even feel like using technology throughout your day. This is how powerful this technique is. Now, consuming technology excessively or 24-7 uh, or being connected 24-7 gives you instant gratification, but it has long-term repercussions. Let me give you an analogy to explain that. So let's take junk food. Uh, if you have a lot of junk food, you feel good in the moment, but it has long-term repercussions like obesity and diabetes. So this is how it works with technology as well. It has long-term repercussions like we saw in our physical and mental health. Now, I wanted to show you a life beyond technology. There are a plethora of things that you can do from relationships to nature connect to volunteering to sleeping. So I wanted to pause the video or I wanted you to revisit the video and think of things that you can do beyond your technology. And I want you to make this a part of your daily digital detox. Given the statistics and scientific research, daily digital detoxing has the power to transform every aspect of your life, every aspect. It gives you more quality and more quantity of time from your relationships to your work to your sleep. And the best part is that you don't really feel like using technology throughout that day. You're, when you're there with the relationships, you're actually there with your relationships. You're more productive at work. You sleep much better. This is the kind of impact daily digital detoxing has on you. Now let me give you two scientific research which has been done regarding this. Number one, people who did digital detox for a period of time reported an increase of more than 79% in their levels of happiness, levels of concentration, and quality of sleep. This is how powerful it is. Number two, people who did digital detox for a period of time reported a decrease of more than 80% in their levels of stress. More than 80%. This is how powerful this technique is. Now, each and every one of us has a very different kind of lifestyle and different kind of commitments. So what worked for me might not work for you. So, but doing daily digital detox in the morning and in the night has its own benefits. So I want you to make your own personalized daily digital detox. Seven questions. Seven questions is all it takes to make your own daily digital detox. So I want you to pause the video or I want you to revisit the video and think of things that you can do and make your own daily digital detox schedule. Seven questions is all it takes. This is where your personal transformation starts. This is where it starts. Now I want to summarize by giving four key messages. Number one, high opportunity cost of excessive use of technology. One more month in a year, six and a half more years in a life. Do you still want to complain that you don't have enough time in your life? Go grab it. Number two, have your own daily digital detoxing strategy. Seven questions is all it takes to make your own daily digital detoxing strategy. Go grab it. Even if you fail one day, learn from your mistakes and start again tomorrow. Third, daily digital detoxing has the power to transform your day and your sleep. Let me give you one more alarming statistics. We spend seven years of our life trying to fall asleep. And one of the big reasons for that is because we've been exposed to the screen just before we sleep. Do you still want to spend seven years of your life tossing and turning around in your bed? Number four, be a change maker. It's not me against you right here. It's not us against technology. It's technology with us against the problems we are facing. We all need to play a role in collaboratively, collaboratively solving this problem. So for example, if you're in the technology industry, then you need to start making technology that is less addicting and, less addicting and actually enhances your life. Or if you're a student who has a healthy relationship with technology, you need to go and start advocating for it to others in your community. I love this quote by Annie Dillard. How we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. And I repeat, how we spend our days is, of course, how we spend our lives. Do you want to spend one third of your day on screens and being connected 24 seven? Your time is limited. Don't waste it using technology excessively and being connected 24 seven. Rather, use that time to live and feel life. Believe me, when you're on your deathbed, you won't remember moments like streaming Netflix late light or checking your notifications or going through your Facebook feed unnecessarily. You would rather remember those moments you spent with your family, you spent in the nature, 
hobbies and passions you pursued that is the time you spent outside technology the time has come for each and every one of us to open our eyes to a world that does not see screens but to the beauty around us because that's where the real magic happens thank you